In this video, we're going to take a really honest look at Elementor's AI interface. Now, I personally think that artificial intelligence is really quite cool. It's interesting. I don't think Skynet's going to overtake the world. I also don't really think that uh, AI is going to completely eradicate humans from creative services such as web design or image creation and things. However, there are some pretty fantastic tools out there. The big hype at the moment for anyone that loves WordPress and more specifically Elementor, such as myself, is that AI is being brought right into the Elementor interface. And there are loads of really happy thumbnails everywhere. This changes everything, a new way to build websites. And what I want to share in this video really is my first experiences with Elementor AI. And uh, really I want to share with you why I certainly wouldn't be adopting it at this point in time. So this might be a bit of a longer video, but if you want to get past all of the hyped up thumbnails that are sort of, you know, pushing this, um, you know, get on the train, get on the trend train. I think this video is that because it's just, I feel like I'm speaking against something that everyone's hyped up in a really positive way about. And I almost feel like the reason that I'm saying something different is because I'm just not getting it or I'm not using it correctly. But as far as I'm concerned, I've been using this as somebody really would do in a web design job. I work for an agency full time. I also have my own clients and my first real tests with Elementor AI has been about can it help me as a tool? Not that I'm a tool, but can Elementor AI be a tool that helps me doing in doing my job? Will it help me do it more efficiently? Will it be quicker? Will it give me the results that I really want? And are there other alternatives out there? Or is it beating the tools that I already use? Now, Elementor offers three types of AI within its interface. We've got the coding, we've got the copywriting, and then we've got the very hyped up use of images. Now, this one is really getting a lot of woohoo uh, in the industry right now. Uh, but keep watching this video to see some real honest attempts to get good and usable results with Elementor AI images. Now, spoiler alert, I meant to encourage you to watch the rest of the video, but I really think that the coding and the copywriting side of Elementor AI uh, is far superior to the results you can get with Elementor AI's images. So it's one of my longer videos, but Keep watching to see some of the trials and errors and reasons why I come out feeling that Elementor AI is not currently a tool to invest in uh, and is not currently a tool that will help you get the results you really need in web design. I just don't think it's really bringing the results or that it's the best tool to do it. So this is my tutorial site. I use it in a lot of my tutorials, obviously. And this is where I was having a first play around with Elementor Pro's um, AI image capabilities. I was having a first little play around with it um, and seeing what results I could get with projects that I was um, currently working on. And I was like, you know, would it actually bring about a good result? And I ran into my first snag and I'm just going to be really honest here. Um, it killed it for me. I'm already being told that I need to upgrade. Now I'm going to say quickly, like if I'm the only one that thought this and I'm stupid for it, then tell me, that's fine. Um, but I genuinely thought that Elementor Pro had added it onto my subscription for free. In fact, a lot of their, their well, their emails were saying this. It was like, hey, we've now got AI gem generated images. Um, if you've got an Elementor Pro account, we've added it onto your account for free. Um, apparently that's not the case. No, you get a trial for free. Um, <laughs> but then you have to upgrade to use it. Um, and I will be honest, for the experience I was having with Elementor's images uh, by that point, it's just no. I really would swear that Elementor's marketing made it out that they were adding it to the pro subscription, a bit like Adobe have done with Photoshop. You get the AI functionality, you know, just added in. Um, but that's not the case with, with Elementor Pro. And so I will be honest, after having the experience I'd had with the images, which was not, again, like what I was seeing on the, the trendy videos of, oh, let's make a vase or, you know, let's fill in some flowers. Um, that was not my experience. And so that in the face of the pricing, which I haven't seen much information about on other videos, um, 
I'm I'm not really too sure about it. So how does Elementor AI pricing work? Okay, so it's a, it's additional to your Elementor Pro subscription. Um, I don't really know how it works in the sense that you could have um, a single subscription. You could have a 25, I think it's a 25 website subscription or a thousand, I think it is. I think those are the packages, I, I don't recall. I'm assuming that it's just to add this you know, these amount of credits to that entire subscription. Um, but really what we need to understand is what do you get for $2.99 a month, which is billed at 36 a year? Um, well, it's a credit system. And so when we look at this, um, your plan gives you an annual amount of credits to spend on the mix of prompts you want to enter. We're not talking about, and as, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're not talking about doing a bunch of prompts, finding the image you want, and then when you click and say, I'm using that image, you'll charge 33 credits. That's not how it's working. It's certainly not what it's saying. What it's saying is that you have 540, if you divide um, that amount, uh, eight, yeah, 18,000 by 33, you have 540 requests. Now, with about 260 work days in the year, um, that would give you about two image requests a day. Every image that I would eventually settle on is going to take a few prompts as I tweak it and try and get what I want, whether I'm doing a, a fill in the, an image or whether I'm creating a whole background texture or image or something like that. It's going to take a few prompts per result, I would say. And so, that really isn't going to go very far if you're working five days a week. Even at a freelancer's rate, that's really not going to go very far. I would say that's two two per day, pretty much. So immediately, this is not going to work. So then, then we've got, like, it's pretty much almost a tenner a month um, billed annually, of course. And so we've got 50,000 credits a year. And they're being very transparent. You know, they'll tell you what it translates to. It's a mix of these all. Um, 50,000 text entries um, or 50,000 code snippets uh, or 1,500 image requests. Now, again, all of these are about the requests, the prompts that you've put in. And th the problem I have with that is that in all of these, you're going to need multiple prompts to get the result you want and that you will eventually use. I'm just not seeing... That just doesn't make me happy, <laughs> to be honest. Um, as a tool to pay for, it looks like I would be billed for a year and run out well before the year is done, especially over the different subscriptions. So one subscription for all your Elementor websites. So that's one subscription. These credits spread out across all of my Elementor websites. If I'm misunderstanding something, let me know. But to me, no. Now, I just want to say, I really, I love Elementor. It's the only tool that I use. I recently had a look at some others that were, you know, getting a lot of attention. And I'm just like, nope, Elementor is best for me. It's best for my clients. It's best to empower them to use their website. But in terms of their integration of AI into the interface, just the pricing is a barrier for me and just this credit system is a barrier for me. I would be more inclined to pay if it was this price for unlimited usage or I'd be more inclined to pay if it was this price for um, when you select I'll use that. You know, when you if you have a trial system, you get the prompt right, get the result you want, test it and then go, yep, I'm happy with that credit spent. That, that would be more agreeable. Okay, so um, so immediately I've run into this barrier and I'm not very happy about it. So in a nutshell, I'm saying that I had a first play with uh, many of the images in uh, Elementor's AI functionality and uh, I wasn't so impressed and then I came up against a, a paywall. And at, at that point and still now, I'm, I'm just not convinced that that is the best way to go. Uh, so... Let's have a look at uh, a different site that I have set up with a, an Elementor AI trial. And, you know, you might find this useful. You might find Elementor AI to be really quite useful and you might like it. And that's great. But I just want to step down from all of the hype of everyone and 
bring it down three clicks and just have a look at it and think, is it useful? Is it practical? And so the best way I can think of doing that is uh, here's we, we've got a demo project site and I'm just gonna duplicate this. Um, you know, my buttons could be awesomer. And what I would like to do really is just see if we can get an AI image that competes with this and we might do. We might do. So uh, what I want to do is uh, use the AI, edit with AI. So I've selected the container. I'm on the style. I'm at the image and I want to edit with AI. The first thing we could do is we could uh, do a variation. Okay, so click on this. Um, create new versions of the original image. Okay, that's one thing that we could do. Spectacular fountain. All right, I think... I think that's a good way to go. We'd like it photographic um, and landscape and yeah, just like that. So we're gonna see if we can enhance this image. Um, and let's see what we get. Now, bear in mind that's 33 credits gone. Slurp of coffee. Okay, <laughs> uh, so let's have a look at these. Um, so we've I, I, I wanted to make this image better um, and uh, we can play around with all of this, but my feeling is that if I play around with this and go generate again, that's another 33 credits. So I think I've got two per day if I want it to last a year. Let's zoom in and have a look at this. Um, now, it looks artificial, doesn't it? It looks like an artificial painting. You know, it, it does look nice, but I'm... Um, yeah, I'm not too thrilled. And this is genuinely how I was feeling when I was having my first go with it. Uh, this does look nice, but it, it looks like when I used to play around with Blender and follow Blender Guru, um, I had some great times like trying to create images and stuff, but it looks like bad versions of 3D renders. Um, let's look at this one. See that, the, the more colorful flowers, that looks like it's just, yeah, it's just bad. I'm sorry. So it's it's not like more water. And I, I'm a bit hesitant to actually correct that because that's another 33 credits off my trial as well. Um, I'm more interested to see what we can get from scratch. So let's see what Elementor AI can do from scratch on this one. Um, images will be gone forever and we won't be able to recover them. I'm not a fan of that either. Um, so let's right. So let's bin this, and now I believe that if we click on this, we can create an image. That's great. Stone walkways and a large fountain in the middle. Okay. Um, now I saw other people. They did things like um, I think someone put eight K in some of the demo prompts. Eight K. I hope that's right. Otherwise, I look like a real Wally. Um, 8K and high res, just things like that. Uh, background, I want it to be photographic, like this, and landscape. And 169. 169. <laughs> we all love that. Um, generate. 33 credits gone. Counting. Ugh. Slab of coffee. Might get something a lot better here because it's from scratch and okay. So this is photographic. Okay, I'm and again, I just really want to say that this is how I was genuinely feeling when I was having my first go with it. And that's why when I hit the paywall, I was just like, no. Uh, what I was feeling was that you know how music of a particular era, like the 70s or 80s, you just hear that, oh, they, they clearly discovered synths, and now it's just in all the music. I, I get that sense here, you know? Um, all of them have that same look, and it's, it's, it's cheaper 3D rendering. I don't, you know, what else do I have to put there to get um, something that's really good and high, high res, really photographic? That looks like, again, like someone's starting to play in Blender. Right, so let's uh, do a fresh one. Um, let's come in from the garden. A smart and clean living room interior with dark walls. 
lush green plants and cultural ornaments oops on dark wooden shelves um yeah that's cool and I, I guess i could leave it as background but i want to state that i want it to be photographic um and landscape i suppose and 169 and generate image now the results for a few interior play arounds that i i tried were more pleasing so we'll see what we have see that's quite nice isn't it um this one in particular is really quite lovely um and i would definitely i would definitely consider that it does a better job of interiors than outside in the garden i thought that was terrible to be honest so let's have a closer look at this i mean it's still a 3d render obviously you know it's, it's still a bit like um yes yeah, someone's playing around in blender uh but it's much nicer in fact i i'm like oh yeah i'll take a few ideas for that um from that for the <laughs> for my own room um yeah i really like this one so this is quite inspiring but of course it's not like it's not like we can really really create that that's you know it's it's like the same space it's like going to ikea and just seeing a few different renditions but yeah i mean that's quite nice um i would be tempted to say you know with some really colorful artwork on the wall something like that but that's going to be 33 credits and you can see how you start to feel like a bit oh is it worth that but yeah these are these are pretty cool uh which is my favorite how, how did the fire come along that's quite a good fire as a demo we're going to use this image um and yeah that's really quite nice isn't it yay go elementor ai here's the other thing is that where does it go you know if we wanted to use this image elsewhere on a different page we can obviously duplicate the section so it is in the media library and look it's it's a webp image uh it's 77 kilobytes that's cool um and it's 683 you know we could download it if we really want couldn't we uh we could save image as and i just want to view it you know, you do end up with it in your media library and you can use that elsewhere. Back to the page, however, because I would like to have a little look at what it can do more with sort of figures and people. I would like to get something like um, uh, a sad old man sitting in a dark room on a chair. A sad, lonely old man is holding a flower all right that would be cool i'd like it photographic i would like it portrait that sort of thing um and i would like it i would like it sort of uh yeah to fit a hero image so that seems right to me so click coffee okay so funnily enough these are pretty much the exact sorts of images I was getting. You, you know, they're not they're not terrible at all. Although I don't know, we've got some uh, joined twins here. Um, what I've noticed is that we we get a lot of um, issues, sadly, with sort of eyes quite often and hands. We'll have like sort of six fingers or whatever. So this guy has three actually. If I'm looking like that, and that one looks a little bit like. Anyway, <laughs> let's have a look at this. And one, two, three, four. So there's something weird going on there, isn't there? That's that's not fun. But, uh, you know, otherwise, and at a glance, it's quite an, a cool image. Let's have a look at this one. See, that's getting a bit what's going on there. And so we've got some errors here. Now, you know, it's a complex. It's very complex, isn't it? Um, but I'm not seeing the results here that you see on Adobe Photoshop AI generated images. Uh, it's not looking like that. Right, I would like to make this black and white and generate again. Another 33 credits. Okay, so this is this is better. You know, it looks cool. That, that's, that's, that's quite good. All right, I'm liking that. Um, Again, you know, you look too close, it's going to look a bit odd. It still has that flavor of artificial image, but, you know, it's it's pretty good. 
That's a really good one. That's a really good one. Um, and that one. Now the thing is, I, I kind of can I can I save it? Oh, let me do a new tab. Oh, that works. Well, so you can you can nab a few more. Look at that for your prompts. Uh, so that's pretty cool. But notice it's all sort of like the same. So I I'm like oh actually I think I, I think I want him to have a beard and. You know how often you would like really just scroll through Shutterstock and and really just find the thing that, you know, it's like, yep, yeah, that's perfect. We don't have that freedom here because every push of the scroll bu button, as it were, it costs. Um, so I kind of want to, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so right, new prompt. Long hair uh, falling around her face and a cigarette in her mouth, high res, did I say black and white? I did, let's leave it at that, and holding oh, a flower. So we're looking for something like this. Now look at this demo prompt. High key fashion portrait of a, oh high key, should I put that? High key, pretty cool. Uh, let's have a look, closer look. Um, well I don't know what that I don't really know what's going on there, but yeah, we've got the flower, got the hair falling around the face, kind of. Um, is that a kind of a, I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't think it's a cigarette, but there's no flower. Yep, yeah, cool, all right. So let's remove the black and white. Long hair in a ponytail and a cigarette in a mouth. Yep. Yeah. Oh no, holding a drink next to a swimming pool, okay. Okay, so let's uh, go with that. Okay, got to say, that's pretty cool. Apart from, oh no, uh, we've got some hand weirdness going on there. Otherwise, that was that was going well. What about here? Um, we've got some odd finger stuff going on. <laughs> Take me to your leader. That's actually a good and usable one. So that, that's pretty cool. And this one, this is looking hopeful. Um, but no, we've got some weird alien fingers there. Uh, so that's not usable either. So three of those are not usable. Uh, one of them is okay. Right, I'm gonna give it a new prompt. I'm gonna try one more thing uh, before we have a look at some code and a bit of copywriting. So, um, dog in a sweater, I'm curious. Bride and groom. Now, obviously my thought is, can we make something that rivals uh, the wedding picture on my tutorial site. Um, now this is a bit like something I got in my first play around because this is this is the first sort of prompt I was giving it. Um, and look, I mean that's pretty good. That is pretty good. But what the hell's going on with her there? But yeah, what what's going on there? That's a bit of a shame. There's a there's a fault there. Blurry, cartoony, not photographic faces, and they're sort of like melding together. Um, we've got a photo bomber here of what the ex-wife <laughs> and all of their faces are screwed. And again, we've got this random bride here and a bit of a groom and messed up faces. Now, you know, I feel like I'm just being a git and just, you know, as everyone's saying, throw a shade on, on it all, but um, I'm not meaning to. I'm just trying to give you an idea of, is this a useful tool, especially as you hit a paywall for it. None of these are usable, but that would have cost 33 credits. Now, I'm not actually going to look at coding um, in this because, hey, it's just gonna use up my credits. But instead, if you would be interested, I have had quite a lot of success using the free chat GPT, um, and I've, I've been using that with custom coding. And sometimes I've had whole conversations with it, sort of saying, that almost worked, but this didn't work. Can you, you know, try and make it work with this snippet of code? We've really worked hard together, me and me and old chatty, um, to get cool little uh, results and within Elementor. I don't see that actually even happening um, with custom coding in this and it would cost me. So I'm just gonna say outright, I have no interest in using Elementor AI for coding. I'm really happy using ChatGPT. And if you would like to see some of those processes I've done and what I've achieved with it in a, another video, then let me know if you'd like to see that. That's cool. Uh, just throw it in the comments. But what is quite good is apparently you can use Elementor AI for a bit of text, which is okay. Now me personally, I love to give a, a site 
Lorem Ipsum text because you don't really read it and it's just sort of demo demoing the space and everything. Um, but what you can do, you've got a text editor here. So let's pretend that we are Lansfield Gardens with Lansfield Interiors, okay? So Lansfield Interiors, okay? So what might we put? Uh, so we can write a product description for or offer a few sentences to invite visitors. So write a few sentences, welcome website visitors to Lansfield Interiors. So I've given it a bit of background on uh, Lansfield Interiors. Welcome to Lansfield Interiors, where we are passionate about creating modern and comfortable living spaces that you will love to call home. That's pretty good. Um, we understand that every individual has their unique taste and preferences, which is why we work closely with our clients to bring their vision to life. Our team of experienced designers is committed to providing exquisite interior design services to ensure your home reflects your style and personality. We prioritize quality and attention to detail in delivering exceptional results that will exceed your expectations. Whether you are looking to revamp your living room or transform your entire home, we are here to help. Join us and let us create. Now, I am using that. It's a bit longer than I wanted, but um, pretty impressed with that. Uh, it's certainly something that you could use. Let's do one more. Um, that I'm impressed with, absolutely. Okay, so again, we click on the sparkles and we're gonna give it, um, create a blog post. Okay, saying about the benefits of web design tuition and why Chris Good web design is the best choice for learning. How can it win really on this one? <laughs> a little bit kind of speaking to you more than the prompt. Web design is becoming an increasingly vital skill. Um, the tutor has many years of industry experience, oh, that's true, and has worked with various clients and projects. Yep, secondly, the course is hands-on and practical. Well, it is actually my Udemy one and the one that's available on my website very soon. With students working on their own projects from the outset. Yes, true. Um, lastly, the small class sizes, wait, <laughs> mean that students receive more one-to-one-on-one -on -one attention and feedback from the tutor. Well, that is actually true. I'm gonna use that text and uh, I would have put that in the description below. Uh, this video. So um, that oh, that is a great use of AI in the Elementor interface. It saves a lot of time. It's really quick. Get a good body of text and then you can tweak it further. That's fantastic. Just it does cost you a credit and that's on a yearly plan. You can get the same from ChatGPT. Look, if I just show you, whoop, I have ChatGPT on a bookmark and uh, it's great for just getting a foundation of work done. Um, but I can literally just jump over to that site, bung in a prompt, and I've got it all there, by the way. ChatGPT, you, it keeps your conversation thread and you can just tweak it and say, ah, can you take this out? Can you make it a bit more formal? Can you make it a bit more informal? Can you write it in my tone, which you teach ChatGPT Chat GPT that. And so I will say that whilst this is fantastic, I've been really impressed with these two, at least something to work from. ChatGPT, it is free, jump on it, use it, and you can also custom code that in a really awesome way. But I think everyone would agree, especially with a paywall, the images from uh, Elementor AI are just not something to rave about just yet. So there's quite an honest look at Elementor AI I think it's more honest than a lot of videos out there on YouTube at the moment. I think it's great that it can be directly in the interface. I really do. And AI is a really great tool. But I just think that ChatGPT is free. You can custom code and do text in that. And for £10, uh, it was about £10 for the bigger Elementor AI package there uh, in order to use generated images. And I just wasn't impressed enough with that. Now, if you're willing to pay £10 per month, then as far as I understand it, Adobe Photoshop is about 20 a month and you have free use of AI uh, within that. So, and, and then you've got Photoshop, which is just, yeah, okay. So I would say get Photoshop, get, get a Photoshop subscription, use generated AI. The images that you use there or create there can be used anywhere. Um, and then you've also got ChatGPT for custom coding 
and uh, creating any of the sort of copy text, which is only for getting a foundation of work, by the way, and a structure of work. Uh, but then you need to edit it and make it human. Um, so I hope you found that useful and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know what you think of, about AI in general, whether you think it's a danger to the human touch in the industry. Um, and let me know what you think of Elementor's AI. I'd love to know your thoughts. I would, I would love to discuss this one actually, to be honest, because yeah, it's, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Anyway, um, please do uh, like, subscribe, look out for any further videos and I hope you have a good night or day morning. Bye.